Doesn't this family photo look wholesome? Wouldn't you just love to be a part of a big happy family like this one? Those trips to Disneyland and big get-togethers look really fun, don't they? Even if you have to wear the same outfits. Yeah, okay, that's already creepy. But you might wanna think twice and look again. Because like so many cases on this channel, all these happy photos and videos were hiding something a lot more terrible. It would be left up to one brave girl to rescue her brothers and sisters before for the truth and did all of their lives. Are you ready? It was a quiet evening in a peaceful Californian suburb where nobody ever expected anything bad to happen. It all looks pretty normal, right? But in January 2018, the police received this worrying phone call from the area. I live in a family of 15 people and my parents are abusing, they abuse us, and my two little sisters right now are chained up. The Turpin family lived in that suburb and the caller was one of their 13 children. The police and investigated, and as they entered the house, they found out what Riverside County District Attorney Mike Hestron called the worst, most aggravated child of cases I'd ever seen. The girls' mom and dad were Louise and David Turpin. They'd married when Louise was in her early teens, and because of some very strong beliefs, they had 10 daughters and three sons. They'd moved to Paris, California in 2014, and one neighbor had spotted something really weird going on with the family. This was even before the police got involved. Mike Clifford said, You know, we're from 12.30 to 3 in the morning. Is the kids marching between those two rooms up there. And, and how long would they march back and forth for in, in single file? Hours. And in previous places where they'd lived in Fort Worth, Texas, the people who took over their houses found ropes on the bed and lots of filth and deceased animals. But nobody seemed to raise much concern. Even though nobody, even in the California suburbs, saw the children of this huge family outside very much, only when they did, they'd seen the children going through the trash, as if they were looking for food. But why on earth would they do this? Jordan Turpin knew that time was short. Her brothers and sisters were so weak after so many years of almost no food that she was sure they wouldn't all survive their move to Oklahoma. There was only one choice, and it was risky as hell. Now, Jordan had managed to get a hold of a deactivated cell phone and used it to watch her favorite singer, Justin Bieber. Unfortunately, her mom had caught her and punished her. She'd almost been suffocated just for watching some music. But Justin Bieber's songs had totally inspired Jordan to survive this nightmare. So, taking that deactivated cell phone, Jordan snuck out of the bedroom window. Two of her younger teenage sisters escaped with her, but were soon so scared by being out there that they went back in the house. But Jordan kept going. She ran around the corner and made the call she hoped would save her family. She knew that if she got caught, she would be in a world of pain. What's even braver is she'd never even been outside before. Not on her own. Not at all. I have to wonder what they actually did during all those Disneyland trips. Now, in Jordan's urgent phone call because of the isolation, lack of food, and what she'd been put through, I think she sounds a lot younger than a girl who is almost 20 years old. I live in a family of 15 people, and my parents are abusing, they abuse us, and my two little sisters right now are chained up. And when the police turned up to meet Jordan on the corner, I can't imagine what they expected to find there. Perhaps they thought it was a prank, but Jordan had taken photographs of her family's horrible situation on the same phone. And after looking at these truly awful images, the police had to take action. The police went in for a welfare check. What the cops discovered in that family house and what Jordan's parents had done to her and her brothers and sisters was more shocking than anything they could have believed. For years, David and Louise Turpin had worked together to chain up, beat, and even choke their children. They only allowed their children to eat once per day and shower just once per year. Even the police noticed how poor Jordan smelled when she was rescued. The older children appeared much younger because of how little they'd eaten growing up. The oldest victim, who was almost 30, only weighed 82 pounds. One preteen had an arm circumference that was the same as a baby. And the children barely knew anything about the real world. Some didn't even know what medicine and police were, which isn't very surprising. Those really weren't healthy conditions for anyone. And Jordan says in her phone call, We live in filth, and sometimes I wake up and I can't breathe. 
because how dirty the house is. There was trash and human waste everywhere. The authorities even found pets that had passed away and had just been left there, which I can't even. Now, what was done to the children was described as calculated and systemic. These two sickos knew exactly what they were doing, and they got away with inflicting this insanity on the people they were meant to protect for a really long time. What Louise and David Turpin did was so bad that one of the rescued boys who was in his mid-teens could barely walk. He had a major vitamin D deficiency and visible scoliosis. Scoliosis is a condition where your spine gets bent out of shape and twists over to one side. It can usually be treated easily, but you need a parent or guardian that cares enough to take you to a doctor to fix it. While he was being treated, the same rescued teenager told the doctor that he wanted to kill animals and could predict the future. So, yeah. It would take a lot of physical and mental therapy to overcome what had been done to him. Even when they got rescued, many of them spent over six months being treated in hospitals because, like, they'd never been able to develop normally. Unfortunately, even after they were rescued from that awful house, some of the younger Turpins still didn't end up anywhere safe. In one case, the very people who were meant to protect them were almost as bad as Louise and David Turpin. Ugh. But life with their so-called parents was unbelievably horrible. Louise and David Turpin would put out fresh, delicious smelling pumpkin or apple pie on the counter, knowing full well how hungry their 13 kids were. And as much as I love puppies, it's disturbing that the two pet dogs at the house were fed way better than the children. Louise and David would even let the food go moldy in the fridge. The kids were punished if they tried to eat more than the one bologna or peanut butter sandwich a day that they were allowed. Like, they got more than just a slap on the wrist for acting up way worse. And because they were chained up in their rooms for up to 20 hours a day, that didn't give much of a chance to get anything else. They were totally controlled, even the ones who were basically adults. It's no wonder Jordan made a run for it. She just had no choice. And they're all still struggling to adjust to a life away from that horrible house. Also, they still can't access the funds that were raised for them. Over $600,000. Because the real world can be totally rough, and just as mean. Some of them have had to survive by couch surfing. Like, what the heck is going on? I mean, at least they're free now, right? But they should be able to access all the help they can after such an awful start. And what eventually happened to their so-called parents? Did the children at least get justice? I cannot describe in words what we went through growing up. My parents took my whole life for me, but now I'm taking my life back. David Turpin was so torn up about what he'd done, or maybe just upset about being caught and called out for it, that he let his lawyer read a statement instead. In the statement, David Turpin claimed that, I never intended for any harm to come to my children. Louise Turpin also acted as if she cared in her statements to the jury. I pray for my children every day. I want to say again, I'm truly sorry. I am for everything I've done for them. I love them more than they could ever imagine. Maybe instead of only praying for them, you could have actually tried feeding them. Twisted monsters like this pair always act like they're sorry. But that's only once they've been caught, right? But did the jury fall for their tears and apologies? The Turpins pleaded guilty to 14 charges of torture, adult abuse, child endangerment, false imprisonment, and they definitely did even more horrible stuff than that. That's just the surface of what they inflicted. In April 2019, the Turpins' parents got sentenced to 25 years to life each in prison. And finally, they won't even get parole for another 22 years, so at least that pair of monsters are finally getting a taste of what they put their family through. Because damaging someone can affect them mentally and physically for the rest of their lives. This was one of the worst cases like this that we know of, but we've covered plenty of others too. So check out the other videos about disturbing real life cases. Like, why do some people even have kids? And don't forget to comment below on whether you think the Turpins should ever be let out.